coming up tonight on the News at 5. We're digging into the state's first report on hospital capacity, what we found when we looked closely at the numbers. Plus, ballots for the November 3rd election hit the mail today. We will tell you how many were sent out. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Jessica Nelson. Thank you for joining us. Montana sees another huge jump in cases today, adding 715 new COVID-19 cases. Active coronavirus cases in the state continue to inch closer to 6,000, with the current number being 5,952. There are 213 COVID-related deaths in the state, and hospitalizations have climbed to more than 260. This week, the state of Montana released a snapshot of COVID-19 hospital occupancy and capacity in Montana. The first report appeared to have some inconsistent and incomplete data for certain hospitals. MTN's John Riley has more on why that is. The state of Montana released their first COVID-19 hospital occupancy and capacity in Montana report on Thursday. Officials say it's intended to be a snapshot, with local situations changing frequently. The Montana Hospital Association says even so, it's good for people to see the broader impacts in their area. I think for the public to understand is that uh, as the uh, community faces more spread, uh, by looking at these numbers, you can immediately it, uh, evaluate what is the impact on your community. Beyond those numbers, that you see uh, daily being reported from the state. Looking just at the report, there is some incomplete data, namely St. Patrick Hospital in Missoula, one of the largest hospitals in the state, only had COVID-19 cases reported. Data on all the number of beds and ICU capacity are absent. The state says the missing data points are because St. Patrick didn't provide all requested information for the first report, but expect the information to be more complete in future reports. MTN has also discovered some inaccuracies concerning St. Peter's Health in Helena. The report said that they had seven active COVID cases during the snapshot. However, St. Peter says they've never had any more than five active COVID cases at any given time. Bed capacity in the report also didn't match. The state says again they're relying on data that was submitted to them, but have encouraged organizations to correct data in the system if they notice an error. MHA told MTN there's going to be anomalies, but they're working with the state and their members to help sort them out. But even without the report, with continued rise of COVID cases, hospitals need people to follow social distancing guidelines and wear a mask. Uh, this is not a question of whether or not you're violating someone's civil liberties. This is a question of what is our role in humanity? What is our role in terms of how we are going to care for one another? And we know we have vulnerable populations. Montana has the sixth oldest population as a percentage of our total population. Reporting in Helena, John Riley, MTN News. Tonight, coronavirus cases at Benefis Senior Services in Great Falls continue to rise. The most recent report says there are 24 confirmed cases at the East View campus. There are no confirmed cases at the other two campuses, but some infected residents are reportedly being moved to other campuses. Now, MTN did reach out to Benefis to ask why they have not heard a response. Time now to check our forecast with meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. Well, you reminded me the good news is that today is Friday. Uh, the bad news is we've got some wildfire smoke that is increasing here across the state. Northern Montana, a little uh, easier breathing, so to speak, with good air quality. But you can see a lot of the central southern part of the state, the air quality is not so good. And the smoke is moving from the southwest up towards the north here. And that's because a storm approaching us will enhance the southwest flow and that's going to drag some of that wildfire smoke from Idaho and California up into Montana here. However, it's just a brief increase in the smoke sign our smoke. This may be the last uh, real bad day tomorrow being uh, the bad day uh, where we have uh, some smoke in our skies because we've got flakes falling on some of the wildfires here in the state. Some raindrops uh, coming as well and talk about a case of the Mondays. I'll let you know what you can expect for next week coming up. 
Another staff member in Valier Public Schools has tested positive for the coronavirus. Today, students and staff are back to remote learning for two weeks. All students will be learning remotely until Wednesday, October 21st. School events are postponed until further notice. A new class schedule is up on the district's website. Junior high and high school students who do not log on when classes start will be marked tardy. The superintendent says the first day of remote learning went pretty well and the decision was not made lightly. I think the most important message I can send is each case of COVID and each school is is unique. It's that uniqueness and the, the inquiries that the county health department as well as I do that determine whether you take as drastic measure as we did with going remote for two weeks. Over in Cascade Public Schools, someone associated with the district has tested positive for the virus, but they haven't been in contact with students or staff recently, so schools are staying open. A different employee is also quarantined for two weeks after being in close contact with an infected person. St. Peter's Health is reminding the community to get the flu vaccine this season. They said getting the flu vaccine this year is more important than ever. And if you've never received the vaccine, well, now is a good time to start. In 2019 flu season, the CDC estimated over 60,000 deaths due to influenza, with close to 750,000 hospitalizations. Now, St. Peter's Director of Infections Prevention admits the flu isn't as bad compared to the COVID-19 virus. However, community members taking the flu vaccine could help St. Pete's and other hospitals stretch out their resources for this winter season. Because of the expected double pandemic that we could be expecting with an increase in cases of flu and COVID, if you are protecting yourself against the flu, that will protect yourself from getting one less respiratory infection that can be potentially serious. St. Pete's recommends getting the flu shot no later than the end of October to maximize the effectiveness of the vaccine before the flu season begins in November or December. Mail ballots for the general election are now on their way to most Montana voters. 45 Montana counties are using all mail ballots because of COVID-19. The other 11 are sending ballots to those who choose to vote absentee. The Montana Secretary, Secretary of State's office says altogether 624,000 ballots went out today. In recent weeks, judges ruled on several legal fights over election procedures. Now they decided all mail elections can go forward and ballots must be returned by 8 p.m. on election day. Election officials say in the end, the procedures are very similar to the June primary. So it worked out well for us and for the voters that the instructions we're sending and the ballots we're sending are all valid. Everything's legal and correct. That's included in there. In June, Montana saw its highest primary voter turnout in decades as all counties used mail ballots and officials expect another huge turnout this time. Governor Steve Bullock announced today that Montana's minimum wage will increase by a dime in 2021. Beginning on January 1st, the new minimum wage will be $8.75 an hour. The federal minimum wage right now is $7.25 per hour. The minimum wage in Montana is required to be adjusted annually for inflation after citizens passed ballot initiative 156 back in 2006. Every year we look at the change in the consumer price index from August of the previous year to current August. Um, and we use that to calculate inflation over the last year and um, apply that to the minimum wage to see a, you know, equal percentage increase in minimum wage. The state reports estimate 8,000 to 10,000 Montana workers received hourly wages less than 875 per hour in 2020 and noted many minimum wage workers like those in the food service industry are frontline workers who are at the greatest risk of COVID-19 exposure. All right, when we come back, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenens breaks down the full forecast for us with a deeper look into cooler temperatures headed our way. And later, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, we might have just the thing, and you won't even have to leave your couch. Weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenens. 
Well, good Friday afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back uh, to the show here. Uh, not a bad day in Helena, slightly cooler than yesterday. 74 degrees made it up to uh, 76 for the high temperature. Another day with above average numbers uh, here, and perhaps you could see a little in the way of some of that haze out there. A little cleaner air, less haze, less smoke. The farther north you get in the state, 69 degrees right now in Great Falls. 60s and 70s, a lovely uh, October afternoon here, lovely fall afternoon. We will have another warm day tomorrow with more in the way of wind. Pretty good wind up off of the Rocky Mountain front here, but because of that wind, we are looking at dangerous fire weather conditions. A red flag warning has been issued here uh, for a good chunk of central and southwestern Montana, even far eastern Montana will get pretty windy and dry and certainly warm tomorrow. We're going up into the 70s and the 80s. A few fires still active out there. There's a fire west of Broadus uh, that is up over about 3,000 acres, but uh, the latest on the Yogo fire, not much activity on this one here today. Almost 4,000 acres, 0% containment. There will be snow on this fire coming up here this weekend to help put it out. And I think the Yoko fire will be out by the time we get into Wednesday, Thursday of next week. There's that storm system approaching. And speaking of storm systems approaching, we've got Hurricane Delta, which has made landfall now. Wind of 100 miles per hour as it has just moved into uh, Louisiana. So just imagine those conditions, 100 mile an hour winds and uh, 10, 20 inches of rain uh, coming down right now. We could use some rain on the fires into California. There's the smoke increasing tonight and into tomorrow ahead of the fronts that will affect us here this weekend. But look at the smoke being pushed off towards the east heading into Sunday on the heels of some very strong west winds, some clean air uh, coming in here for this weekend. And then that may be it for a while as far as wildfire smoke. Still some smoke coming from that Mullen fire in southern Wyoming and northern uh, Colorado and still some activity on those California fires. But a uh, series of storms coming into Montana will really start to accelerate us into ending fire season. Not over with just yet. Tomorrow, windy and warm, but here comes that front. Look at that rain moving through the western part of the state. Rain showers likely coming into around Helen around 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. Not much around Great Falls. May even be a rumble of thunder. Uh, this is not a huge rainmaker here, but as we get into Sunday, very windy conditions. And look at the snow showers flying in the mountains. A couple of mixed rain and snow showers will fall in the lower elevations as well. Now, down the continental divide here, there may be several inches of snow by Sunday afternoon. A little snow out there around the little belts uh, here as well. Here's the forecast for tonight. Temperatures in the 40s and the low 50s. A pretty warm night considering our average lows should be uh, for the state into the mid 30s, low 30s, and we're in the 30s and 40s uh, for most of the state. Here's the forecast for tomorrow. Very windy off the Rocky Mountain front. Remember, red flag warning conditions almost near 80 in Gray Falls. Look at these numbers. Chinook 85, Harlem 85, likely setting some records up here along the High Line. The farther east you get out in the state, Lewistown right around record highs of 80 degrees and clouding up through the afternoon around Helena with high temperatures. Also pretty warm into the mid 70s. Please watch the fire danger tomorrow. We're under red flag warning uh, for Helena. Sunday, a much different day. It's a chilly wind, high of only 55. Case of the Mondays, some rain and snow. Snowflakes could mix in down to around the Capitol level, the Capitol building level there, uh, kind of on the south side of Helena. Some rain showers Tuesday into Wednesday. Yeah, it's a much cooler week, more typical here for mid-October and for Great Falls. Some rain showers possibly late tomorrow. Monday, a little mix of rain and snow across north central Montana. Some showers Tuesday. A nice uh, wet pattern here as we get into next week. With COVID cases on the rise and rain on the way, you might find yourself staying in this weekend, but that's not to say that you can't have some fun. MTN's Megan Mannering tells us how the Montana Film Festival is coming to you this year. Grab the popcorn, hit the lights, and don't worry about changing out of those sweatpants because this weekend you can attend the sixth annual Montana Film Festival from the comfort of your own couch. Montana Film Festival is a festival that was started by the staff of the Roxy Theater, and it was 
kind of born out of a desire to program fiction films for uh, a short festival and just enjoy and celebrate great independent fiction filmmaking. This year, the Montana Film Festival is even more unique than years past. You pay $20 and the Roxy will grant you online access to five feature films and 23 short films. Our goal with the festival is to highlight new, exciting, independent fiction films that are from all over. That includes films and filmmakers from the UK, from Germany, and from right here in Missoula. John Budge, Missoula resident and Roxy employee, will bring the short film Ruined It to the virtual big screen this weekend. I've lived in Idaho and um, Oregon. I'm from Seattle. I lived in New York for 10 years. And um, all those people that live there wouldn't have been able to see Ruined It if the festival wasn't virtual. So. You know, there's a big silver lining to it. At a time when it would be easiest to hit pause on events and festivals, the Roxy is making it work and reaching even more people in the process. In Missoula, Megan Mannering, MTN News. The festival is live now. You can buy a ticket at montanafilmfestival.org and watch now through Sunday. All right, coming up next on the News at 5, what some may see as a weakness, this young athlete has turned into his strength. From Montana's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back with us. Communication is important in sports, and one Great Falls High soccer player faces obstacles to clear communication. Here's Isaiah Dunk. It had been many years since the Great Falls High boys soccer team had beaten crosstown rival CMR, but on Thursday the Bison completed a sweep, and it was a big moment for the program, obviously, but it was also a big moment for an unlikely star. When the score is close in a rivalry game, the energy and noise inside the stadium can be distracting. But not for Great Falls High senior keeper Trevin Smith. Smith is deaf, but you'd hardly notice by watching him as he locks down opponents. It doesn't really limit my options, but the reasons I play keeper is because as keeper I can see everything on the field. I can see everything in front of me and it's easier for me to communicate with my team in the box. I could play other positions if I wasn't deaf more easily, but the keeper position makes it easy. Smith, who also wrestles for the Bison, was an all-state soccer selection last season as a junior, and his talent at keeper is even more remarkable considering this. He didn't even start playing soccer until he was a freshman in high school. It's pretty amazing to, to see how well he does. He's an amazing athlete. To be able to pick up the game uh, just three years ago, four years ago, when, we, when he first started as a freshman, not knowing anything, we picked goalie because he's just fearless and he will go after anything. He's got great hands and he goes, un, I mean, lights out every single time. He just will not quit, no matter how hard it hurts or where the ball is, he will fight for it no matter what. It means a lot to Smith to beat CMR for the first time in his career, not once, but twice. And he's thankful for the work his teammates put in to get there. I think my team played awesome. And I think it was awesome because this is the first year that we have won in the last four years our Crosstown game. And of course, it feels awesome. Now, Smith may not have his post-high school plans completely ironed out yet, but just remember, he didn't always plan on playing soccer either. In Great Falls, Isaiah Dunk, MTN Sports. Very great story. All right, we'll be right back after this break. When we welcome our West Coast viewers following the breakup of a plot to kidnap Michigan's governor, we take a closer look at radical anti-government groups now ready to instigate civil war. Also, is it COVID or the flu? The symptoms to know when we see you back here tonight. From Montana's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. If you missed any of tonight's newscast, you can re-watch any of the stories on your favorite streaming device and watch live streaming news and features all day long. Just download the KTVH streaming app. All right, thank you so much for joining us this Friday evening. Have a great rest of your night and a wonderful weekend.